first is our panel, News Corp columnist uh, Louise Roberts and Sky News contributor Daisy Cousins. Ladies, welcome back to the show. Louise, the chatter is that not all is well in Montecito. What's the latest? Well, um, yes, hi, Caro. And there's some pretty interesting sources who are painting a pretty um, bleak picture of what's happening behind those um, glamorous walls of the Montecito mansion. First up, Paul Burrell, who of course we know as Diana's butler right up until her death in 1997. Now he says that uh, Harry is only staying in his marriage so he can watch Archie and Lilibet grow up. So um, I'm not really quite sure how uh, Burrell actually knows this um, information about the marriage itself, but he's maintained, uh, I guess, a bit of a relationship with the two brothers since their mother passed away. So that's very interesting to hear that he thinks that Harry is just sort of being the sort of, um, you know, the spouse who won't leave because he doesn't want to miss his children or, worse still, find that he goes to the UK and she stays in the US, which will be diabolical, of course. Um, second up, we have the information you referred to previously about um, him having these two bolt holes away from the family home. Now, most people, of course, when they have a, um, a bit of a, 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 a fight with their spouse, might sort of retire to a different room of the house. And let's face it, Meghan and Harry I th have, I think, 26 bedrooms in that home. But instead, he's been travelling 160 k's away to those bungalows that you talk about. And also, he's got a bolt hole at a hotel in Montecito itself. We don't know exactly where that is. But the fact that he's got two escape rooms, as it were, I find very intriguing and probably not a good sign at home at all. Thirdly, we have the spectre of the divorce lawyer now entering the narrative here. And this information comes via a very good source in the royal family, Lady Colin Campbell, or Lady C, as she is known. Now, she is incredibly well connected. She's related to either through ancestry or marriage to just about all the European royals. And she says she's heard from five different sources that Harry... Uh, called in the divorce lawyers months ago, which would, if that's true, would be before their fifth wedding anniversary. So I think swirling together, it's not painting a very positive picture of things at home for them. Daisy, was this all just a matter of time? Well, look, I, I agree what, with um, what Paul Burrell said um, as well. He said that in, there were always going to be potential cracks appearing in this marriage because, you know, with great press, about, with great press and, and great attention comes great pressure, you know. So, so understandably, it's like any celebrity marriage, um, you know, the, those sort of rarefied conditions the relationship is in is not necessarily conducive to maintaining a relationship. So I, I would not be surprised if any of this is true. But the other thing we have to consider is that you know, Meghan and Harry, particularly it seems Meghan, are, seem to be willing to do anything to get attention, including sort of potentially fabricating this near-catastrophic car, car chase through the streets of Manhattan, when anyone who's been to Manhattan will know that the city is built like a grid. There are red lights everywhere and no one can move for the traffic. So how could you possibly have a car chase? You know, these the strange factoid things they throw out there that seem so bizarre, but it gets them so much media and public attention. And they have, you know, these contracts with Netflix, Harry's, you know, got to chuck out a couple more books. They need public attention to actually make money and, and make their, their whole strange little business structure grow. So it actually wouldn't surprise me if these were very calculated leaks from the Sussex camp um, su suggesting that there's a split on the cards because either way, whether there is and there isn't, we're all going to look and go, ooh, what's happening here? Even Lady Colin Campbell herself said to be prepared that just about anything coming out of Camp Montecito was a lie. Look, personally, I hate to think of any marriage um, splitting up, particularly when there are children involved in these, uh, you know, little, as you said, very gorgeous children we talked about. We will see what happens, but um, I, I will be certainly watching with the popcorn uh, to see what the state of the marriage is like over the next 12 months or so. And Louise, to be fair, the recent news about Harry and Meghan <clears throat> does seem a little bit all over the place. There's also a suggestion that they move back to the UK. Now, what are the chances of that happening? Well, together, I would say very slim. I think Meghan's made it very clear she has no intention of li living back in the UK again. There's some suggestion that they may purchase a property so they have a home to go to, as it were, which would be a fantastic idea because one of the sad parts, and I think Sir Daisy alluded to this, of this whole 
um, makes it situation is them the children not growing up with their cousins and not getting to know their actually wider family whether or not Harry and Meghan of course want to socialize with them and in fact whether the rest of them want to mingle with them too as well so I think um, I would see more regular visits from Harry, I think, to the UK, but I'd be very surprised if Meghan turns up again because even in his hour of need at his father's coronation, she was not willing to set foot on British soil for fear of any kind of backlash against her. And Daisy, the argument has been made this week that Meghan Markle is the discredited face of woke America. Now, that's quite the claim, but is that harsh but fair? <laughs> Look, I think it's it's a rather good point. I mean, I mean, the claim is that Meghan Markle, with all her, her wokery and her inherited privilege, so to speak, is representative of sort of the the woke celebrity, the have as opposed to to the have not. Um, you know, people who um, you know th through you know whether it's work or luck or whatever, but either way, they lord their supposed moral superiority and their supposed political enlightenment over over the plebeians who currently are you know struggling to put food on the table. And, and in the case of Meghan Markle, she certainly does embody that sort of entitlement. I mean, the fact that she, it seems, expected to come into the royal family and be basically like Anne Hathaway in the Princess Diaries, be the kind of cool princess who comes in and changes the, the whole face of it, when the reality is this is a 1,200-year-old institution. It's not going to shift because of some effort from Rachel from Suits. Um, so I think she really does um, embody that sort of en entitlement and, and a misplaced superiority. And and the thing is, Caro, it's going to continue because, as we know, it seems Meghan Markle has political aspirations to come, so we're probably not going to be rid of it anytime soon. Louise, the royals have historically tended to not take overly political positions. Is the foray into politics a consequence of the Sussexes being perhaps more celebrity than royal? Oh, 100%. I think Meghan does see herself as sort of, it's, you know, world global dominating um, in, in the celebrity sphere, as it were. And you're right, with the royals, traditionally it's against protocol to comment on political matters or sort of have an allegiance with a political party. Having said that, the Queen herself about 20 years ago did sort of jump into the whole debate about voting to encourage young people to vote because, of course, in the UK it's not compulsory to, uh, to vote, as it were. And I think William, a, a few years back, made some, a comment about um, Brexit to some farmers. So... But generally speaking, if you're a celebrity and you have a perhaps a polarising political position or political ambitions, it can actually up your value because you become controversial, which of course is a very uh, familiar domain for Meghan and Harry.